of you guys have heard the story, but um, Petros and I went to lunch with pastors Terry and Lois, and the good old China Rose in Brunswick. <laughs> 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 and as we were eating there, um, um, Lois was sharing with me about her daughter having trouble conceiving, and I said, can we pray for her right now? And it's really fun listening, actually, to Lois tell the story, but because you see, like, another perspective of it, but it was like in that moment, like, the whole restaurant disappeared around our table, and it was just our little round table, and we all took hands around the table, and I started praying things over her, and, um, almost uh, prophetically seeing what was wrong and speaking to it. And and then we just prayed for a little bit, and then we stopped, and we finished eating and talking and enjoying one another because this guy sits quiet, but he's actually quite funny. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and anyways, then the next, um, I don't remember the progression of all of it, but I know that they had been trying for years to conceive, and she had had an appointment to see a specialist, and they had done a scan on her, and she had like a blockage in her uterus, and when they did the scan again, the blockage was gone, and so we were giving a praise report about that, and she was supposed to have another appointment in like six months with um, a fertility specialist. And the Sunday that Miss Lois shared that her daughter, that the blockage was gone and we were all praising the Lord, my dad prophesied that when she got to the next appointment, they would find a baby in her uterus. And that is exactly what happened. And um, so she, when she comes to visit, she brings a little baby to church. And it's just awesome. But oh, it happened at the meal. It, it happened did. Just right after church, hey, you guys want to grab lunch? Which was very spontaneous, because the invitation is usually quite spontaneous if it's for me and Pedro's. It's not usually <laughs> planned ahead. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing right now, this very moment? So how old is your granddaughter now? Eight. Isn't that? Eight. Oh. So if you guys had not gone to lunch, who knows? That affected not just you guys, but Rachel and, oh my goodness, what's her name? The granddaughter. Her name's granddaughter. Emma. Oh, Emma. Her name's granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put up the uh, March 8th thing? <laughs> All right, well... Uh, how many of you are excited and looking forward to March 8th? And and how many of you, because anytime we come to church and we do hear a message, kind of the point is, what can I take from that message and apply to myself today, tomorrow? Um, I know Wednesday night, after hearing Ben Fitzgerald again, I was there when he taught it. Um, I've listened to it again, and then I watched it with you guys again. I said, Fear of man is broken. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to tell others that God loves them. And so when I went to Food City the next day, <laughs> I'm paying, I'm talking to her. Ben is so good. This is what he says. He says, you, and it has nothing to do with your personality. You think, oh, but I'm an introvert, so I, I can't talk to other people. He said, yes, you can. I just heard you sell Maybelline. You were just like, oh, this new Maybelline mascara, it's the best. That's what evangelizing does. I always tell Josh he's a keto evangelist. <laughs> if anybody wants to know how eating keto can make you more healthy and change your body, talk to my son. He will fill you in for hours and hours and hours. He will send you teachings. He's an evangelist. You cannot tell me, there's nobody here that cannot say, I can't do it because of my personality. I'm, you may be afraid because you've got the fear of man. But the love of God is overcoming that. I wish Lois was in here right now. She, uh, where is she? Yeah, uh, she, had a, she had a testimony to share. Has anybody else got a testimony to share about going out this week and, and speaking to somebody, ministering, telling them they, they love? Becca. Here, let's get you on. 
So um, those of you who know me know I'm, I'm, I, I'm a self-proclaimed people hater, but I really <laughs> have a big heart on the inside. <laughs> so it's very out of my comfort zone to like reach out and, you know, especially for strangers, like to ask if I can pray for them or something like that. Um, so <laughs> beginning of the story, I got this coupon in my email about, you know, Instacart, try it, we'll give you $20 off your grocery order. And it was really cold and Sayla was napping. So I was like, whatever, I'll try Instacart. Got all the stuff in my car. I'm like a little weirded out about a stranger coming in my house with my food. Just not my thing, whatever. The stranger gets there. She was super nice. We get <laughs> Her name was Tina. I'll stop calling her stranger. Um, she saw my new puppy in a husky. It, apparently she'd had this like connection in her heart with pu with husky puppies for like forever and she had a husky previously who passed away and blah blah. So that opened the door and she was sitting there and she was petting him while I was putting my groceries away. I'm like, mm, okay, this is weird, but whatever. And she just kind of said in passing about, you know, I really got to get going. This has been just the best treat for this day. I have to get going to my best friend's funeral. And my heart just stopped. And I, at first I was just like, keep putting your groceries away, Rebecca. This is weird. I don't know what to say. But then my heart was pricked. And I was like, did you just, I'm sorry, did you say that you have to go to your best friend's funeral? And she's like, yeah, she's been battling leukemia for a long time. And she lost the battle, but um, we're just going to go celebrate her life. And I was like, this might be weird, but can I pray for you? Is that okay? And she started crying. She's like, I would love someone to pray for me. And so I prayed with her, and um, she went on her way and went to her best friend's funeral. But then she added me on Facebook. I don't know how she got my last name, but she did. Um, <laughs> and uh, so she was really blessed by it and touched by it. And it's just a fun little interaction that I happened to have a coupon and she came to my house and it was weird for me but it was a really good blessing for her so definitely worth how weird it was for me <laughs> it's gonna get less weird because you're not a people hater Lois I wanted you to share um oh it was yeah So is this about what I told you about Saturday at Wendy's? Okay. So um, Terry and I were at Wendy's in Topsom, and um, Terry knows that this is frequent. This happens sometimes, but um, he'll be just looking at me, and I'm really quiet, and he'll say, you ready? Because we're done our food, and I'm like, not yet, because <laughs> I'm getting a download. <laughs> it's like, I'm supposed to be talking to somebody that I'm looking at right now, <laughs> and he's like, okay. So we just sit there and the Lord's just speaking to me. And so there was a young man, probably in his thirties that was sitting over by the window. And, um, the Lord was just speaking to me that I needed to pray for him and that he was full of anxiety. Um, and so I said, okay, Terry, I'm going. <laughs> so I walked over and I said, um, my husband and I are, are in here eating, but I said, uh, the Lord just highlighted you to me. And I wondered if it would be okay if I prayed for you right now, is there anything that you would like prayer for? And he looked at me like a deer in the headlights. And he said, um, he's like, how did you know? And I said, know what? He said, I was just released from prison this morning and I'm waiting for a ride. And I said, okay. And I said, um, do you have a place to go? Do you have food? Do you have money? Do you have a job? And he said, yes, I, I do have all those things lined up. But he said, I would love to have you pray for me. So right there, I just prayed for him. And um, the Lord just was speaking for open doors and um, for him and, and closed doors that nobody could open. And the Lord was also speaking to him about that those that would be younger than him, that he would talk to and be able to have wisdom for them, that they would also listen to him. And so it was really cool. And, and when it was over, he said to me, you know, he said, you are an angel. And he had tears in his eyes. I said, no, I'm really not an angel. And he said, well, yes, you are. He said, you are an angel because God sent you to pray for me today, and I really needed that prayer. So awesome. All right, can we um, finish? Did you want to say something? 
That was at Wendy's? That's so cool. I just think it's cute. That's great. Oh, and did I tell you I told my um, cashier that God loves her? It's a big deal. Cashier where? At Food City. Oh, at the grocery store. At the grocery. Oh. <laughs> food. I was buying food. And I'm not even trying to do this. <laughs> Those cashiers at Food City need to know that they're loved by God. They do. Everybody needs to know. Okay, so um, let's end with um, praying for one another that we would share the love of God, that we wouldn't keep it for ourselves. Let's all stand. So let's just gather in little groups of two and three, and let's just, let's just uh, in the name of the Lord, bless each other, that our, that our hearts would be ready, our, our, there would be a connection between our heart and our mouth, and Whatever the Lord would have us share, that that would be what it is. But let's just bless each other right now and just with, with peace and courage and wisdom and a ready heart to just share the love of the Lord. That the Lord would break us out of our little comfort zones and our, our little fears.